These days, it is not uncommon for people to spend lots of money buying CRTs, which is a display technology from the 1500s, because apparently they are very good for gaming. Which got me thinking, are there any other obsolete display technologies that are secretly very good for gaming? What about plasma TVs? But before we go investigate, today's video is sponsored by Corsair and their fancy Dominator Platinum DDR5 in white. Now aside from the obvious hella e peen that comes with these Domplat kits, they also perform very well. You can get 32 gig kits in up to 6200 megahertz speeds in the white version. And that performance combined with their 12 ultra bright Capellex RGB LEDs make these a great option for any high end gaming system. Check out the Corsair Dom Plats in white using the link in the description below. Thank you Corsair for sponsoring today's video. Wow, it's so much heavier than I was anticipating. Ugh. Now you can tell that this plasma TV is not that old because it's got HDMI ports on it. In fact, we've got three of them. There's another one hiding behind here. And aside from that, we've got a whole bunch of analog video in, which does date it a little bit. And we actually have an RGB PC port, which is just a fancy way of saying a Mesozoic period port. And finally, it's got a standard IEC power port on it, so no soldered on power cables here. But with that, let's install the enormous aftermarket standard came with. I just... okay. Oh, holy meow. That is, that is very heavy. Oh. 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 And after a lot more grunting, I finally got it in place. Whoa, that is a big dirty TV. Actually, that's pretty gross. Just give me a second. Now while I wipe the TV down, let me tell you a bit more about it. Because compared to CRTs, plasma TVs aren't that old. In fact, this LG 50 PK 550 was only made in 2010, which means I have underwear older than this TV. But plasma is an obsolete technology, and I'm curious to see how it holds up for gaming compared to modern standards. Now straight off the bat, I don't think this is going to be a very good gaming experience, because, well, at this point, people are pretty much giving these TVs away. This. 50 inch TV basically just cost me a fistful of pocket lint and a couple of Cheerios. Now in all fairness, this is about a 12 year old TV and uh, Plasma is known to have a problem with burn-in. So yeah, that's maybe why they didn't hold their value so well. And I did buy this from a museum. So I think there's a reasonable chance this TV's just spent the last 12 years displaying a static image, <laughs> which means it would be completely unusable. But uh, let's plug it in and see. Oh, many clicking sounds. Okay, so there's not just like a burnt in shot of a T-Rex skull or something in the image. So that's a good start. Now the first problem that I've immediately noticed is that even when the TV's off, it, the background is gray, basically. So I don't think we're gonna have particularly good black levels on this TV. Okay, this is very exciting. Look at that. Start update. I mean, straight off the bat, there's a real like haze around stuff. And after observing the slight haze around text, I decided to give the display another quick wipe down with cleaning liquor while I waited for the Xbox to finish updating. And once everything was finally ready, I immediately noticed a bit of a problem with this TV. Wow, is that full brightness? It's really annoying. It didn't come with a remote. And wow, it is so slow. Navigating the OSD on this TV feels like swimming through custard while trying clumsily to pleasure a robot. And when I finally got to the brightness settings, it didn't do much. I think I'm gonna have to turn that light down quite a bit. A few moments later. Okay, so I've actually had to change to a lens that can let more light in just so that we can properly see what's going on on the TV. So clearly brightness is an immediate shortcoming of plasma TVs. Uh, but it's nice and dark in here now. Let's start with the good things. Um, if you look at the horse's butt, 
That's some pretty crazy black levels right there. I mean, if you get close to it, you start to see like a, like a noise artifact, but that is some deep black levels right there. Now, aside from the occasional hints at very good black levels, the image is very flat and gray looking. I, I remember Elden Ring being quite a gray game, but definitely not this gray. Now, the muted colors look quite pleasing. It's not as bright and vibrant as a modern TV, but it's got a bit of a, a film camera effect to it. Just a quick note from editor David here, that kind of yellowy trail you see behind moving objects on screen, that only seems to show up in video of the TV. I didn't notice it in person. Although what I did notice in person was that the image had quite a bit of a flicker to it. Th there is a bit of a like a flickering. I don't know if you can tell that over camera, but there's a definite flickering, which is a bit annoying. But with that, let's try a more vibrant game so that we can see how muted it really is. The 1080p is really not sharp. I, I, I remember how people would say like, oh, you can't really see the difference between 1080p and 4K unless it's on like a huge TV and you're sitting right next to it. Like I'm sitting a reasonable distance away from it and it's really not very sharp. Interestingly, high pixel densities were a real problem for plasma TVs, and even something like 1080p at 42 inch was very difficult to make. So in terms of resolution war, plasma didn't stand a chance. Anyway, with that side note out of the way, let's get back to the flat image. Now I've switched over to Ori, which is a very colorful game, and <laughs> This, the contrast on this TV is all over the place. In some scenes, there's really deep blacks, but in other scenes, it's just like a flat gray image. And I think the reason for that may be that this TV has a similar problem that OLEDs have just on a much worse scale in that it can't really produce dark gray. Uh, because plasma TVs are also a self-emissive display technology, so they don't have a backlight. The actual pixel itself produces the light, uh, which means for very dark scenes, the pixel can dim itself a lot, giving you deep blacks, but the moment a little bit of extra charge gets given to that pixel, I think it immediately turns like a light gray. So that's why when there isn't like a very dark bit in the image, it looks like there's basically no contrast. Uh, although, despite that, the colors have a real richness to them. Even though there's not much contrast there, it, it's quite weird. But seeing this TV makes me really want to experience like a very high-end plasma TV, because I think they'd have a really beautiful image. Although, I do think this TV is going to measure horrendously because its white levels are also all over the place. But I'll, I'll measure it a bit later in the video. First, let's plug a gaming PC into this TV so that we can play some FPS games and get a better sense of the motion rendering and input lag on this plasma TV. Wow, on the desktop you can really see how much this TV struggles to reproduce white. There's this like brown haze over the image. So the input lag, th there is a little bit that you can feel. Like it's maybe not quite modern gaming monitor fast, but for a TV, it feels surprisingly good. Like going into this, I was expecting this TV to be unusable for this kind of gaming, but it's so much better than I was expecting. And you can comfortably play a game like Battlefield 5 and not have the input lag bother you. Also, in terms of motion rendering, this may be one of the better 60 hertz signals I've ever seen. Like, it's surprisingly good. Actually, I want to go try some CSGO. Yo. Oh, I got him! What a shot! The gaming experience may be surprisingly good on this TV, but the flicker does kind of bother me. And again, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to measure real badly. So let's actually... Let's actually do a quick measurement and see how it holds up. Using my Spider X to measure the image quality of this TV led to some very interesting results. Wow, that is easily one of the worst color accuracy results I've ever seen. And I tried a bunch of different color profiles and this was actually the best one of all of them. <laughs> that is real bad. Also, the gamma measurement is pretty crazy. Look at that, <laughs> Look at that hump. And then there's also the fact that the brightness settings don't really seem to do anything, and that is clearly not a TV for a bright room. Also, look at that contrast. Damn. 
So in conclusion, this plasma TV definitely wasn't a very good example of one, but still, I was very surprised at how good its strengths are as a technology, and I paid the equivalent of about 69 nice US dollars for this TV. So they may have some real shortcomings, but you can't really deny the value. Actually, considering their strengths and weaknesses, these are kind of like a poor man's OLED, which I think is really cool. And I would still really like to see peak plasma television, because I think that may be something pretty special. Anyway, with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're still using a plasma TV at home, and if so, why you've decided to hold on to it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Until the next video, bye-bye.